Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jalen and today I wanted to discuss some big and or intimidating books that I am very nervous to read. I'm always nervous to start a huge book because it's such a time commitment and I don't know I feel like sometimes even just to be completely honest being on booktube and bookstagram it, there's often like this pressure which is stupid. I, I, I feel like some inherent pressure to be constantly reading and having books to talk about and so if I pick up a huge book and dedicate my time to it it takes up so much, you know, of my time like these reading shorter books and getting more turnout. But I do feel like I'm missing out on a lot of really good stories. Like for example, I posted this post on my bookstagram in which I asked which of these books should I read and I ended up picking The Goldfinch because The Secret History is my favorite book. And so I did read The Goldfinch and I really enjoyed it. I didn't like it more than The Secret History, but I thought it was a great read. And so now I'm tempted to read some more bigger books because I feel like some of the best stories are long and detailed and just have so much depth to them. And so this is my stack. Some of these are shorter too, just some content books that I'm a little bit nervous to read. Yeah, so let's get into it. Oh, but before we start, as always, I am going to drink today um, a Ren House beer, my local brewery that I love, um, I stan. It's called 3144 Pre-Prohibition Lager. I really enjoy this one. I, I think it's a great solid beer. It's not that high in ABV. I was thinking about pairing like this video with like a heavy ass beer, like a stout or something, but I didn't. Let me just crack this baby and let's get into it. I'm too lazy to get a glass. I like to drink out of a glass, but not today. So the first one that I have in my stack is House of Goddamn Leaves. This book, I've tried to read this book, I think twice now. I've made it, ha, I have my, book, my bookmark in here. I've been looking for this bookmark and that's where it is. Um, yeah, I made it, is it 19 pages? No. Oh, cause there was like this intro part. I was like, I did not only read 20 pages of this book because I feel like I made a lot of, you know, I thought I made a dent in it, but I know I'm like one of the last people to read it that are like book nerds. And it's a very um, strange book about a house that is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. And so I know as you get further into it, um, shit gets weird. Where's like the weird stuff? I've flicked through this so many times. Yeah, it's just, oh, yeah, with like the squares and stuff. I don't even know. But um, it's just highly recommended. I know so many people say it's one of their favorite books. It's a very, um, I guess, intense read in which people feel, you know, paranoid and claustrophobic because that is a very strange idea. Um, I really liked the intro, it was pretty spooky, and so now with the like, Halloween coming up, I think I might give it one more try. It just gets a little dense in certain parts because it has like a ton of footnotes where the narrator just kind of goes on like a tangent, and I feel like it's going to lend itself to the insanity that he faces throughout the book. Yeah, I don't know, I'm just, I'm afraid to commit so much time. I know it kind of flies by when you get further into it because the pages get, you know, a little bit more sparse in text or get bigger, so... Yeah, if you're a House of Leaves fan or critic, let me know because I want to know if it's worth the time. I do really want to read this book because I see so much, you know, discourse on it. So, yeah, I don't know. Next is Haruki Murakami's um, Killing Commendator. This kind of goes for any big Murakami book. Uh, I recently read After Dark, which is a super slim book. And I'm a bit nervous to read a longer book of his, like 1Q84 or this one. Uh, just because of its length, but also I'm still not completely sold on Murakami yet. Like I really liked After Dark, but I'm not sure um, if I like all of his books. So this is just the one um, long book of his that I had on my shelf, but I do want to read more of him. And I heard this one is actually really good um, from some bookstagram people. So yeah, I don't know. Let me know if you like this one or his other big book. Okay, next. It's a small book, but I recently picked it up at a uh, book fair, a local book fair for three bucks, I saw the sticker on it. But it's William Faulkner's The Sound and the Fury. Doesn't even have the title on the cover. But I heard this book is pretty complex and difficult to get into, but I have two friends that really love this book, so I really wanna read this book. I'm just a bit intimidated by um, maybe it being dense, I don't know. I've heard it's a strange book, but I heard people love it. Obviously it's a classic, so I wanna to get to it soon. Next, this is a big one, but The Count of Monte Cristo. Is it Monte, Mont Cristo? Wow, I don't know why I don't know that. I feel dumb right now, but um, I picked this up like in high school. I don't even know why, because I wasn't gonna read a big ass book like this in high school. I don't know. Did I pick it up? I don't know. So this has been on my shelves for like years now. So 
long story short. But yeah, this is a long book, but I often see like on Reddit, I know it's not really a place to be trusted for like book stuff because a lot of the same books get recycled on r slash books and stuff, but people say this one's really surprising and um, has a propulsive plot and it's just a really good classic. And I know it's a very long book. I actually think this version is abridged because it's only like 500 and no, yeah, like almost 600 pages, but I think the actual book is like over a thousand. So whenever I pick this one up, I don't, I'm not gonna read this version. Um, I guess I'll unhaul this at some point, but yeah, I wanna check this one out. I don't even really know the plot. I think it's something about like revenge or something. I know it's supposed to have like some good action. I don't know. This is just going off the top of my head, but I wanna check it out. And if you like this one, let me know. Next, ooh. So this one, this is like the definition of a book I'm intimidated by. It's Duck's New Report by Lucy Ellman. Um, I've seen so many really good reviews on BookTube and Bookstagram, praising the hell out of this book. It was short, was it shortlisted for the booker? Yeah, it was shortlisted for the booker. Um, and I really want to check it out. It's just, if you don't know, it's like a thousand pages of stream of consciousness. And so it's just naturally intimidating because I know it's gonna take me very long. And I think what I'm gonna do is, you know, read it while I'm reading other stuff and just kind of maybe dedicate like a certain number of pages a week to make sure I'm like making progress through it and eventually get through it. And I feel like what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get a certain number of pages in and just be totally gripped by it. I've had some friends that have read it and said, just do it because you get into the groove. And so I guess we'll see. The premise is awesome. It's about like this 40s housewife who's just thinking and baking. And it's like, you know, a critique on a lot of, you know, modern things such as Trump. Um, so yeah, I am excited to read it. And it's just heavy. I'm gonna see if my library has the ebook version because I'm gonna like, I guess it's kind of a workout reading this book. You know, getting some toning going on while holding this behemoth, but yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, my stack is getting in the way now. Joy of big books. Ugh. Okay, next is Dune by Frank Herbert. Talked about this in a couple videos, but it's a big one. I know it's kind of older, it's a sci-fi, but you know, the movie's coming out soon. I wanna read it, not sure if I'm gonna love it, but I'm gonna, gonna give it a shot because I dropped some coins on this baby. I think $40, yeah. So I wanna read it in advance of the movie and I think I might be surprised by it. So I don't know. There's a lot of Dune heads out there that are like, Dune is the best book of all time. Like, please read it. So I'll get to it. Next is A Little Life by Hanya Anagahara. I feel like my channel is just gonna like eventually just be me every video talking about how I'm so scared to read this book and don't know if I should. But um, one thing that's kind of weighing against my decision to read it is Noelle Gallagher's recent reading vlog of this book in which, you know, she's she cries and she's really, you know, wrecked in a sense by this book. And, you know, she has a really insightful, you know, ending discussion of this book in which people often seem to, you know, gather around this book and want to, you know, commiserate in the trauma that happens in this book. And it seems like it's almost now been dubbed as like this challenge, like read a little life and see if you cry. You know what I mean? And I just don't know if it's necessarily something I even really want to read, um, especially right now because things have been kind of down in my personal life and with COVID and it just doesn't seem like the bright book for me right now. But on the other hand, Alex from Opatriwan, he has, you know, praised this book and, you know, responded to the criticisms to it, which makes me receptive to reading a book like this, even though it's full of trauma, it's also a great story of friendship. And I can totally see this being something I know it's absolutely worthwhile to read and I know it has merit, I know it's well written. Um, I just don't know if this is the book for me right now. And so I might just keep saving it um, and I might not read it, I don't know. I just don't, I feel like pressure to read this book for some reason in the book community, but I just don't know if it's gonna be worth my time per se, given I don't really want something traumatic right now. I don't know, it's my ramble, but yeah, I guess we'll see if I end up reading it one day. And next are two horror books that are huge. And the first one is Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky, who wrote um, The Perks of Being a Wallflower. I don't think he wrote a book since that book. And this is like a big 800, 700 page, I think, horror novel. And I've seen a lot of mixed reviews. I've heard it's too long. Some people really enjoyed it, uh, but I really liked The Perks of Being a Wallflower. So I'm just interested to see what he does with horror. And I feel like it could be a good Halloween read. And, um, who knows, maybe it'll be a surprise for me because I do enjoy horror. So yeah, if you read this one, let me know if you like it. 
And finally, it is the King, Stephen King's It. I have seen the movies, I know the general plot of this book, and funny thing, I think like two or three years ago, before I was on Bookstagram or Booktube, obviously, I had started reading this book and I made it like two or three hundred pages in and I really was enjoying it, but I stopped reading it, like for some reason, I don't know why, it wasn't that I wasn't enjoying it, but I just put it aside and forgot to pick it back up, I guess. And I just don't know if this is worth my time. Um, I recently watched Noelle Gallagher's reading blog of It, and she loves Stephen King. She already knew the plot as well. And she said that there was just so much detail in it that was unnecessary. It was, you know, overly long. I think she gave it three stars. And so I just don't know if I want to, you know, spend the massive amount of time it's going to take me to read this book. And that goes for a lot of Stephen King books. Like I know, so one issue is that, not issue, but they're really, a lot of them are huge. And I don't know... I'm often just afraid to pick them up because I'm like, I, if I don't like it, I'm gonna be bummed that I wasted so much time reading it. On the other hand, there's some Stephen King books that are longer that I generally know the plot of, or even shorter ones that I know the plot and I just, I know a book is obviously different from a movie and just knowing the plot of something isn't enough, but it sometimes puts me off to read something that I already know a lot about just because I wanna be excited. So that's like something I've always think about, like, should I read this book even though I, I've seen the movie? Like for example, Gerald's Game, it's a shorter Stephen King book and I saw the recent movie adaptation and I loved it, but I already know the general plot. Spoilers coming up, skip ahead like 20 seconds. I know she like takes her hand out of the handcuffs and she like escapes, like I, I know it happens. And so like the whole book, like reading the book, I'm not gonna feel that much suspense knowing that she gets out of it, even though it's a horrific way that she gets out of it. Um, but yeah, I just don't know. It's conflicting for me. But let me know what you think. I, on the other side of this discussion, I recently read Pet Cemetery, and I knew that plot already for the most part, and I loved that book. So I don't know what I'm talking about, because I, <laughs> I probably could love this book anyway. I mean, a good story is a good story, even if you know it already. People reread books, and they love them. So I don't know. I'm just talking to myself at this point. But let me know if you like it, um, if you think it's overly fluffy. I know that it's like his number one book, like this in the stand. Well, some people consider them his magnum opus, and so, I don't know. But yeah, so that about wraps up books on my shelves that are super long that I don't know if I want to read just because they're too long or because of the content. Oh shit, there's one more book. And another book that's content-wise very um, disturbing is The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum. Funny story about this one, I picked this up when I was a youngster, like maybe eighth grade or like early high school from a grocery store. And I was looking for like a horror, like I love horror. And so I saw this and it sounded scary because it's about a teenager that gets kidnapped and is stuck in a basement with, um, and bad things happen to her. I guess I was like a messed up kid because I was like, oh yeah, let's read that. I liked a lot of more like scary stuff when I was younger and I don't have the same constitution to read overly like gory or horrific things now as an adult because I think I actually understand the depth of these things and so I know this book is super insanely dark and disturbing and the things that happen to this teenager are horrible. I kind of know what goes on in this book because it's based on a real life crime that happened to some, to a teenager and so um, I don't I don't think I'm actually gonna read this book. I'm glad when I was young I never read this book because I don't think I at that age needed to be subjected to this stuff and also now I just don't I just don't think I want to read this. Um, I know a lot of people like applaud this book for you know addressing something so horrific head-on and I can definitely see you know the merit in this. I'm not saying it's a bad book, I haven't even read it, but I'm just a bit nervous about subjecting myself to this and I just I don't know. I don't know. I just can't. Horror can be too much for me sometimes <laughs> when it comes to like torture and um, knowing that it's based on a real story. And I think the real story is supposed to be, you know, even worse than what happened in this book. It's just gonna put me through a lot. And so I just don't think I'm gonna read this one, but if you have read it and you think it's, just give me your thoughts if you read it. I don't know. Okay, anyways. So that about wraps it up. Um, those are all my big books that I'm intimidated by or small books that I'm intimidated by because content. And so yeah, let me know if you, do you have similar feelings about big books? Are you nervous to, you know, commit the time to them? Or do you love big books? Or what are some of your favorite really long reads that you think are worth the time? I'm, I'm happy to talk about all of this stuff in the comments. So until next time, cheers.